Okay, it should be recording now. And the people that don't show up, I hope it's enough for them to read the instructions I have for the project. And they, of course, I will, I will post this video. Maybe, hopefully, that will help them. But um, first off, I want to say um, on the on the uh, uh, project one. Now that it's all graded, and and even on some of the extra and the extra credits, uh, those of you who done did them mostly did very very good. You know, I was very uh, happy about things. Um, we didn't see a lot of common problems like we usually do. You know, the 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 problems that we did see were kind of spaced out. You know, over. A lot of different things. So Aziz, thank you so much as usual for for not just grading them, but <laughs> taking the time. <clears throat> excuse me, taking the time to uh, to point out to people the things they need to watch out for. I think that helps them a lot. You know, um, I took a look at a lot of them myself too after Aziz graded them. Uh, there was there was a situation. The only correction, the only uh, change of scores I made. Um, uh, Aziz had had looked at the reports, and a lot of the reports were were uh, had fields that weren't showing the entire field, or they were overflowing the margin and all that. And uh, and I said, even though that is something you should have caught, the bottom line is I realize that especially on uh, reports that sometimes it depends on the resolution of the screen. Uh, now now having a field that's chopping off data and all that, you still want to fix that. You want to, you want to make them wider. So go through, you know, look at, you know, what it's showing on the screen. And if it's chopping things off, because if it's chopping off on the screen, if you go to print it out, it's going to chop it off too, you know? And you may not think that's a big deal, but if it's somebody's name and you got two people with similar names, you know, and what maybe it's, uh, John Jacobs and one's job, John Jacobs son, and you chopped off that old land, you know, which one is it now? You know, um, I know that it's, that's probably a rare thing, you know, but yet, you know, you want your, your reports to look good and you want them to be thorough, you know, I, again, I, I put a lot of emphasis on reports. A lot of people go, well, what's the big deal? You know, when you got so many difficult things in this class to learn, you know, this is something that, well, you know what? Reports are, 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 are how people will judge you, you know, and judge the system. Uh, reports, as I said, are things that industrial engineers do all the time. We're constantly aggregating data and creating reports, you know. And, and again, I think Microsoft Access's report mechanism is one of the, most, one of the strongest. In fact, this next project, it's that's kind of the focus of it is making some, two really great reports utilizing some of the more advanced querying and reporting techniques that we learn in lesson six but it also i also want you to hone your skills on the relationships that you learn in lesson five so that is going to be the the bulk of doing this next project so is this if you guys were on earlier you heard me saying that i i put a new project together for this semester Spent a lot of time doing it, guys. So that ought to tell you it's probably going to take you a long time to do it. Uh, you know, so budget your time accordingly. We'll talk about the the uh, schedule in a second here. Okay. Right now, I want to share my screen, and we'll get into this. So this session is the session that um, we use for lesson six, and I am not going to say much about it other than it is adding a lot of capability to things we've already done, all right? Uh, there is uh, uh, a, a whole section about what's called joins. Joins, in my opinion, are one of the, one of the central themes in this class. Um, and you'll hear me say in the video that in the, in the world, when database administrators talk about their data, they rarely ever talk about relationships. What they talk about is the joins between the data. And because joins are what gives you different views of the data and allows you to take data fields from different, from different tables and bring them together. Uh, now, I'm going to tell you right now, for this project, you're going to be doing that too. But I limit you to just two tables at a time, all right? 
joints could get incredibly complex. They could be long threads of stuff. And the truth is Microsoft Access doesn't handle joins as well as some of the major database project, products out there. In Microsoft Access, you pretty much have to break up your, if you have a long thread of joins, in other words, you have a relationship that is in a relationship with another table, which is in a, itself in a relationship with an, another table, and it may be in a relationship with another table, and you need to bring back fields from all those and put them in one view. A lot of times, Access can't understand this, especially if you put a join on it, what it needs to do first. So sometimes what you have to do is you have to take part of that, maybe two of those, and build a view, build, build a view for the fields we want from those two. And then instead of having a join between the table and another table, you have a join between the table and that query that brought back that view. It's interesting that Microsoft treats tables and queries as if they're the same kind of thing. There's something that holds data, basically, or at least something that conveys what data looks like, sets of data look like, okay? They return what called data sets, and some people call it views of the data, all right? Now, I mean, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I did not cover that in the video. And, re and again, the reason I didn't is because we're going to keep the, the joins for this class pretty straightforward, okay? When you do your project, so you may have something that's a little bit more complicated. When we do a, uh, the uh, lesson seven, I'm actually going to show you several examples where the joins are very complicated, okay? And they have many, you can think about it as multiple levels of joins in order to accomplish the, what we want to do for the entire, for the single view. And I think you'll find it interesting. And after you do this project, it will make, that will make a lot more sense to you too. So I will tell you right up front, there are two, three videos for lesson six. The first one is about joins. The second one is about the last relationship that I haven't covered that I didn't cover in in uh, five. The last subject relationship, and that is what's called an auxiliary relationship. I decided for project two, I will not ask you to do an auxiliary relationship. All right, and again, when we get to lesson seven, I will show you an example of it. But I also have given you an example out on uh, the lesson six. Um, on lesson, on lesson six to show you how to do an auxiliary relationship. But watch that video. It's a, I know it's a long video, but those auxiliary relationships are incredibly interesting. You know, you know, not many people use them and it's a shame because they have some real value. But I have some friends who are in security at Spirit and they say, we're using them. We're using auxiliary relationships all the time now, John. It's the only way we have to protect some of our data. So, uh, good to know, and I know a lot of you have talked to me about the fact that you're interested in data security. This is one of those things in this class that really has something big to do with data security. And then the last uh, video for lesson six is about what's called a multi-subject uh, report. You know, uh, when we have a form, it's usually dedicated to a table or a query, okay? We haven't done anything with a query yet, but we will, okay? And in fact, uh, um, I think, yeah, in the, in the auxiliary uh, relations video, you have to use a query to make a, an auxiliary relationship happen on a form. So you'll see that. And then again, I will show you an example of that in lesson seven. But for, uh, for the third one, where we talk about the uh, um, multi-subject report, okay? Reports can actually have more than one subject related to them, okay? Uh, and the way you do that is by putting subforms that are, are specific to um, uh, each subject or, or query that you wanna have uh, information about. And then another one, and you just bring it together on in what's called a report canvas. So you can see multiple things at the same time. Often, though, what we do is we will have a master report, just like we have a master form in, a, in some of our relationships, and we drop in sub-reports, and guess what? They hook up just like sub-forms did. Uh, in other words, let's say I had um, customers, and they have telephones, okay? They also have links. We, we saw something like that, all right? I could have a customer report and then have a subform about the customer's links and then have another subform about the customer's 
um, phones have that in there and they're related to the master record and the master report then it works just like the master forms did with with its with its sub sub forms okay but we're using sub reports instead but we do have a situation too where there doesn't have to be a master record at all we could still bring in two things that are basically unrelated and put them into the same report and some people might ask, why would you want to do that? I'm going to show you a real good reason next week, okay? Uh, let's say we're, we're doing cost compared to parts and then say cost compared to, um, well, I, my, I think I use, I, use, I use the auction one. I had costs for, uh, for all the auctions I had. And then I had the overhead costs, the expenses I have in my company, all right? Those are two tables that are not related at all. All right, but they both have costs in it. And I'd like to add up the entire, all my costs for, for operating my business, which means I have to have the cost of one and the cost of the other and add them together. I can actually have two reports that are in a master report. Even though the master report doesn't have any data at all, I could throw a derived field in there that says, take the total of that one and total that one and add them together. And that's the total of four for this, for the whole thing, for my whole business. It's kind of neat. And again, I, I'll show you this. I, I, think, I think that's what I do in lesson three. Yeah, I'm pretty sure of it. Okay. I, I mean, in the video, I'm sorry, in the third video for lesson six. So, um, so having, after having said all that, the video you absolutely want to concentrate on for project two is L06-01 because I am going to ask you to make joins in a couple places in this thing. So you'll really need to understand how to make joins. And I did a, I, I did a lot of explanation on them. Okay. And it give you a lot of examples for it. So you shouldn't have any trouble picking it up by yourself. All right. So let's get into the project itself and talk about it. Okay. I'm just going to bring up the instructions and we'll talk through these and then I'm going to show you some of this stuff. Okay. Um, first off, uh, it's our, it, we want to build basically um, a database that tracks shipments for a small manufacturer of, of assemblies. Okay. Now I'm not telling you what kind of assemblies, you know, what assembly usually means is that we're putting stuff together. Okay. We're taking parts and we're putting them together. Okay. We're not, we're not really going to be that concerned about what the assemblies are for. You know, it's pretty much a generic thing here. Okay. And the parts themselves too are kind of a generic thing, even though for both the assemblies and the parts, we're going to have types associated with them. Okay. Uh, so a small business manufacturer, manufacturers assemblies and assembly is customized based on the requirements from a from a contact okay i know i probably should have called them customers but i'm going to call them contacts because i actually made i i have people who are just customers you know who order things and then i have distributors and then i have contractors and all that so i'm just going to call them contacts and know that it's the contacts that are basically ordering these assemblies now we're not going to really track their order all right, we're just going to say that an order has been done and we're going to create an assembly. We're going to track the assembly and, and it's shipping and all that. OK, so an assembly is made up of parts that are specific to the assembly. All right. So right there, that should tell you something. Assembly is going to have many parts, but any part is only for that assembly. OK, so you've got a, a supplemental relationship right there. I've already told you something. OK, mechanics assemble the assembly. Using machines that are on site at the man, uh, at the manufacturer's site, basically, multiple machines could could create an, an assembly. So when I'm doing an assembly, I may use multiple machines. Okay, and the, the order doesn't matter. We just want to uh, the order of the records do not matter. Okay, you just need to say these are the machines I use. Bam. All right, and. Um, any machine can have numerous assemblies. In other words, and not, not at the same time, but any machine can work numerous assemblies. So as that tell you, we've got a many to many between assemblies and machines. So you've got two relationships right there we've talked about. Uh, multiple inspectors can inspect an assembly prior to it being shipped to a contract uh, to a contact. Any inspector can inspect any assembly. And even though in a real database, I probably would have a subject for 
the inspectors. I'm not going to do that here. Uh, same thing with the mechanics. I'm just going to have a lookup, okay, that lists the, the people who can inspect it. And the one, obviously, if I can have multiple inspectors, it ought to be a multi-pick for the inspectors. Uh, for the mechanics, it's, uh, it's, it's a single pick. And you'll see that. I'll actually show you an example of how that would look in the form then, okay? Now, the manufacturer already has a start to the database. They already have, they have already, they already have a table that shows their machines. And each machine is categorized by the method in which you set it up. So that's already there. They already have a lookup uh, category relationship between a subject table called machine and a lookup table called machine setup. And it has data in it, all right? They also have a table for their contacts. And the contacts have a type. So again, we, have a, we already have a table for contacts and we have a uh, lookup table for the contact type and the relationships built for that. So you're gonna get those. You don't have to do those at all, okay? But that doesn't mean there isn't something to be done in this one, okay? And I'll point that out in a second, okay? But the contact one is pretty uh, pretty much ready and you, uh, you will use it though, okay? You will, it won't need to be modified itself, but you'll use its value in the relationship. So the manufacturer desires to record information about the assembly, including the parts used on the assembly, the machines used to create the assembly, the inspectors of the assembly, the mechanic that built the assembly, and we're going to just say one mechanic builds the assembly. The contact that ordered the assembly, the shipping information for the assembly, and the cost associated with the assembly, all right? Now, I am giving you, and I'm going to say right up front, you can make this thing look however you want. But I try to show you, and I try to do all of it, most of it on the first tab here, okay? The information that you will basically show in your uh, subject form for the assembly subject table that you will build, okay? But I'm even gonna give you a lot of guidance on that too, okay? So I'm just showing you how mine looked. And I'm showing you how I document, how I, I annotated things and, and, and made it look, uh, stand out for the things that are required and put labels on it as needed. And you can see we have, these are all just bound fields. All the things in white are bound fields. And so also is the, is the uh, attachments. Now, I didn't put any attachments in here. You feel free to do that though, okay? Um, but it's there, to, this is a, a one for photos, okay? And you do not have, again, you do not have to structure yours like I have this, okay? You can structure it whatever way you want to, but you have to have all these fields and you have to have one that's a derived field that shows the total cost. What's the total cost? It's the shipping cost plus the production cost plus the other, any other costs that might be documented here okay it basically just adds those together you guys know how to do that and i haven't even asked you to do a conditional format on this okay that one's just yellow because i made the background yellow that's it okay um you will notice here at the top though that the uh fine record control actually has values from three fields in it okay i created a single field as a, a derived field in the source of this that basically brings together those three fields. I want you to try to do that. Okay. You may need, you may need to build a join to do that. Okay. I'm just going to let you know that. All right. The good news is I'm also giving you two others where I've done this for, for the other tables too, uh, for the other uh, subjects. So you'll be able to go in and look and see how I did that one. And you should be able to mimic it here a bit. All right. Then you got uh, a, a tab in here for parts. And oh, by the way, on this, I did want to mention too, if you decide this is too busy or, and by the way, you could add more fields, feel free, okay? If you decide this is too busy and you want to have the shipping on a, a uh, page of its own, go ahead and do that. Take them off of this and put it on there. If you want to have the cost on one by itself, you could do that too. You know, I probably would have the shipping cost shown in two different places. And remember, you could do that kind of stuff, okay? But that's up to you. And those are the kind of things I want you to do on this, all right? I want you to be creative here, okay? And now, the assembly uh, parts, okay? What I want there, 
remember that is basically a subform for a supplemental relationship between assembly and its parts. And I want you to create that subform and put it in that tab. I also want you to create the subform for the junction records between assembly and machine. And this one obviously is from the perspective of assembly. Because the other thing you're going to do, let me just skip ahead here a little bit. The other thing you're going to do is on machine, you're going to do the same thing, but from the perspective of the machine. In other words, there's an assembly tab over there that has nothing in it. You've got this, I built this form for you already. You've got both the table, the subject table for machines and the subject form. And you've got this assembly page on here, but it has nothing in it right now. So you have to build this and put it in there. Again, this stuff you should be able to do now since you've done five and, and read through six. And then of course we have an inspection uh, page on here where I've got that inspection control that allows me to select multiple inspectors. And I put a little note on there too if I have any notes about the inspection. All of them have notes, attachments, and data revisions like they usually do. You don't have to do anything special to those. Uh, they're already, if you use the BAL, and you should use the BAL uh, template to do this, then you get those automatically, right? Um, and, and BAL template for the subjects too, okay? Uh, the form for the manufacturer currently, uh, that the, man, uh, the form the manufacturer currently uses to manage the contact information doesn't need anything done to it, all right? So you're getting the contact subject and, and the, uh, the one um, um, category relationship it has to the, to the contact type, and you're getting the contact uh, um, form done for you. You don't have to do those, but use them for inspiration. The other thing I built in there, are, and I'll, I'll show you this more in a second, okay? But uh, yeah, let's let's go on, okay? I'll get I'll go through the entire instructions and I'll show you what I've given you, okay? Be, uh, and I kind of talk to the forms already, but there's some more to tell you about, okay? Since the central need for this information system is assemblies and their shipping, two reports are desired. The first report shows the assemblies that have shipped group by the assembly type with groups shown in the report according to their predetermined display order. Do you remember when you go into a lookup table and there's a field called display order? That should, when you hit the drop down, it then come, the, the, the values come up in that order, whatever display order you specified for it, all right? We wanna use that same display order to order the groups in here, okay? So not applicable was given one, unknown was given two. In the assembly, in this assembly type um, uh, lookup, and I, and I actually built that for you too. I'm glad I thought about that before I said much more. I have actually built this for you already, the, both the table and the, uh, the lookup table and the lookup form. Even though the subject doesn't exist, those are there already. All you have to do is link them in, all right? Uh, build the relationship and bring them in. You know, put the foreign key in there and all that, all right? In there, you'll see that not applicable is the first, unknown is the second, Gunther is the third, uh, coordinate, and, and you're not seeing all of them. There's more in here, okay? The ones that did not have an assembly, I don't want to see them. So that ought to indicate to you the type of join I need, okay? I am going to need a join between this, between the category field in the category table, in the lookup table, and the assembly code, the date, blah, 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 that are in the assembly table. I'm gonna to have to have a, a query that joins the lookup table to the assembly subject table, and then brings back this field and these fields. And then it also has, a derived field in there where I calculate the uh, the shipping delay. It also has a uh, derived field where it calculates the total cost, and it's the same total cost as it was uh, for the uh, the derived control and form. Okay, I hope that's clear. All right, so I'm going to tell you right now this is an inner join. It's an inner join because all you want are values from 
the tables that match each other. In other words, you don't want to bring back information from assembly type that doesn't have anything related to it in, in the assembly records. Conversely, you don't want to bring back any assembly records that have nothing that never received a type. Now, I'll tell you, that can't happen here because it turns out the type is required. So it's going to have to be an inner join no matter what you do. All right. Now, the other one shows all assemblies for each contact with the contacts listed in al ascending alphabetical order and then the part number code listed in ascending alphabetical order, okay? So it's a, you got two sorts that you have to build in here. One for the group, uh, I'm sorry, one for the, uh, uh, yeah, for, for the contact, okay? Which is the contact's name is also what we're gonna be using for, as the group for this. So you wanna bring those back and then you wanna bring back uh, all the assemblies for each of those contacts, but you want them listed in alphabetical order by the assembly code, okay? So again, over here, they came up in order of the display order that was on the lookup table. Here, they're going to just come up in order of the contact name, all right? And this is built, built on a reference relationship. Okay, the reference relationship is between contacts and assembly. Contacts can have many assemblies that they order, but an assembly can only have one contact that bought it. All right, but they are both major subjects of this database. So it's not a supplemental relationship, it's a reference relationship. So you'll have to use that special um, um, foreign key field in the ball object for that and bring it over and build your foreign key for the reference relationship. I'm going to show you the schema for all this in a second, okay? Now, things to point out in here, there are conditional formats on these fields. When the shipping delay is greater than three days, and I say this in the in instructions, you want to make it look like this, okay? That's a rule that we have, that we try to ship everything within three days. So if we don't do it within three days, in other words, it's greater than three days, I have a conditional format on this field that, that will make it stand out. That's the only one that has a conditional format there. On this one, it's a little bit more difficult, okay? We never want our shipping costs to be more than 50% of our overall cost. In the case where that happens, I want to have the same kind of format. Again, it's a conditional format, but it's a conditional format that's not just relying on a number, it's relying on the reference to whatever you call this total cost, all right? And I, you, you actually know how to do this. And I wanna see, this will separate the people who really know, who've been working from the people who haven't. Yeah, I, I think the whole thing will actually, but this one will be especially. And then this one right here, see this message that says excessive shipping costs? That only comes up when that shipping cost was violated, all right? I haven't shown you how to do that. I want to see if you can figure that one out on yourself, on your own. And if you do, you're going to get extra credit for it. All right. So let's go down here. Here's the minimum requirements for this project. Okay. You're going to, first off, you're going to use, uh, I, I, I've given you something to help you understand just exactly what it is you need to build. I'm going to go there right now and show you. Okay. Here is the schema. Boy, it came out kind of blurry. I'm sorry about that. Here is the schema for what you're about to build. I have given you the machine and the machine setup. And when you go up and open the database window, you will see those two tables in there. You will also see contact and contact type. You will also see assembly type, assembly mechanic, and assembly inspector. What you won't see is the assembly subject table, the junction table between assembly and machine, the TSP between assembly, uh, the, the supplemental table, I should say, between assembly and assembly parts. And you also do not have the assembly part type. Okay, so you'll need to have that lookup table here. So that's what you will need to complete. I've color coded this to show you which of the fields are required, which of the fields are unique, and then which and which fields are are uh, unique and required? Okay, uh, the only thing that's that that I've color coded unique is to show you that this is 
uh, an alternate key that's made up of two fields. This is an alternate key that's made up of two fields. So the alternate key is unique, but the fields themselves are required, right? That's the nature of a, a multi-field alternate key. And you only have two of those in here, this one and this one, okay? You do have several places, you do have one un, unusual place where the machine name is required, but it's also unique. So here, one, here you actually have two fields that could have served as the alternate key, but we'll say for the sake of argument that the machine code is the alternate key, all right? So what do you do on machine name? You index it, no duplicates, and that takes care of it, right? So I'm giving you, I'm do, I have done a lot of this for you, and I'm telling you almost exactly how to do this. So, and again, I think a lot of you have been doing a lot, a lot, a lot are sitting there going, wow, this isn't that, that bad as I thought it would be, okay? Those of you who have been falling behind, this is your chance to catch up, you know, and I hope you take advantage of it, all right? The other thing I'm going to tell you is how to set the referential integrity on the relationships that you develop, okay? Not only are those tables there, but I also put any relationships that exist between them, okay? These ones, they're, they, you'll have to build those category relationships. All category relationships in this are like any other category relationship we've done all semester. You set cascade update on, cascade delete off on all the category relationships. On the supplemental relationship, this one right here, you want the cascade on, update on. We always do that, right? But we also want cascade delete on. It doesn't make any sense to have information about parts for assembly if the assembly record goes away, right? So we're going to set that one to be a cascade delete. On the junction table, it's going to depend on what side you're on. It doesn't make sense for the junction records to go away if the assembly, uh, I'm sorry, it makes sense for the junction records to disappear, to, to be deleted, I should say if the assembly records deleted, why would I want to keep information about the machines that the assembly that were used to make them make the assembly if I don't have the assembly anymore? But in the case of the machine going away, I don't want to get rid of those records. Okay, I need that history of the assembly. And if I got rid of the machine and let the cascade delete here, I would lose whatever machines were used to create that assembly. So on that side of the relationship, the cascade delete has to be off, okay? And then on the reference relationship, and here's our reference, okay? There's a reference between contact and assembly. On the reference, we want the cascading update on, like always, but we want to keep the cascade delete off. Think about it. Does it make sense for an assembly to disappear just because I took out a contacts record? No, that's still a record of the work that I've done. If I'm using this to report stuff to the IRS, yeah, maybe I took the contact out here, but I still want to know that that contact ordered that assembly at one time. So I don't want cascade delete on here. And this right here, the foreign key for that relationship, you get out of that ball object that says reference single pick. And I'll show you that in a second, okay? So let's go over there right now and I'm gonna open up the work file. Well, let me actually, let me go back to the, um, no, I'll do it right now. I'm gonna open up the work file and show you what I've given you. So here's the work file you use, P02, your name, got ACCDB. Oops, got the wrong one up here. How did I do that? Oh no. I, I, that was something else I opened from, from before. Okay, so here you go, okay? And you'll see that there are tables here that, uh, that have been established. If I open up the relationship, you'll see the tables that have been built for you already, okay? And again, some have relationships established. You'll build the rest of the tables, create the other relationships, create their forms, and create, the, uh, especially the forms for, uh, you'll create all the forms uh, for the tables, obviously. And what I wanted to show you is, there is a ball object right here called single pick reference, okay? That's where you get the um, foreign key template for that reference relationship. And you just fill it in like you did the single pick and the multi-pick when we did those, all right? But it is, a, it is different, okay? It's actually very much like the artificial key you get in the uh, supplemental table, okay? It's when I open that up and if you remember the template for its, uh, key, it's right here. It looks a lot like that one. In fact, it, I think it is exactly the same thing. All right. So anyway, 
uh, I have given you all the ball objects you can possibly need in order to do this. So you've got your subject template, you've got your junction template, you've got your supplemental template, you've got your lookup template for the for the tables okay you've got all three of the uh foreign key templates i've even given you the multiple pick even though i'm not asking you to do another multiple oh yeah i'm sorry i am i'm asking you to do the inspectors okay so you'll need that one and you'll need the single picks and you'll need the reference so you're gonna need all of those okay the one in the tables that I don't expect you to use is this one that's called Tau subject plus auxiliary. That's the the uh, the ball object for an auxiliary re relationship. I put it in there for a reason. I'll tell you in a second, okay? But you don't really need to use it for for the the project, okay? In the form section, you've got a template to do your uh, your lookup uh, form, and you have a template to do your subject form. Of course, with the uh, subforms that you need to create for for the um, um, supplemental table, and then the the two that you'll have to create for the junction table, you'll want to use that multi items deal to create that. So you and again, that's something we did in lesson five. So you should know how to do that. We did it in the tutorials, so you should know how to do that. Um, see if there's anything else I need to say about that. I don't think so. I think that's all I had to say about the, the forms. There is this form in here that's called FLB miscellaneous labels. That is something I give you in the bottle. If you open it up in design view, you'll see it. It's just labels that you could copy and paste into your thing. So, you know, you know, I always label my things unique and required or required. I use sometimes a uh, something to show a short date format or last name, first name, middle initial, use to manage attachments on attachment fields, free form on, on uh, uh, lawn text fields, memo fields that are that are rich text. You know, you can just go in here, click on it, do a copy, go to your uh, design view of, of whatever you're using and paste that in and you're ready to go. Um, and you could alter those however you see fit too. If you want to change the colors, you do whatever you want to though. That's just an extra, okay? So with that, the other thing you'll do is the, the reports. And let me go back to the, uh, the instructions. Um, I always forget where I do that. Okay, here it is. Okay, so the minimum requirements. Subject table for machines, and contacts are are there. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I messed that up. It, that should say subject subject tables for for the assembly, the machines, and the contacts. Okay, it should all be there. All right, so all three of those need to be there. And basically, just reproduce what I have in that schema. I'll fix this up and repost it. Um, uh, related lookup tables uh, for the machine setup and for the contact type are already there. Okay. And then, oh, I'm sorry, I was trying to say that this is what this file contains already. I'm sorry, I misread it. Uh, this file already contains those two, it contains these two, and it contains these three, okay? Now I'm telling you, build all the other tables and fields that you see in that schema diagram. Uh, the fields of the alternate keys and the uh, unique require, require fields, unique, those are all in the legends of that, and then the referential integrity is spelled out for you, okay? In the assembly table, the assembly code must be 15 uppercase alphanumeric characters. They have to put in 15 characters. They have to be alphanumeric. They have to be uppercase. Okay, what does that tell you? Probably need some kind of uh, input mask, I would, I would think. Uh, in assembly, in, again, in that same table, set the ship weight and the ship length. They're both double. Okay, their, their field size should be doubled. So there's numbers, double, their format should be fixed and the decimal places should be two. Uh, again, in assembly, you're going to have a field in there for the assembly date. I, I'm not actually saying what that, that field is. You just know it's there, right? And you have a field for the ship date. They need to be within the last 30 days and they cannot be in the future. So that should tell you right there, you're putting a range on there and the range is variable based on the date that the record is established, right? Okay, or the 
date that the, the value is entered into the field. In TBL assembly, uh, uh, set the default value for the ship costs, the production costs, and the other costs to zero. Make sure you do that. Otherwise, your derived controls may not work correctly. Okay, if they think if it thinks that it's a null value in there instead of a zero, and uh, then it won't compute the uh, the value. All right, so make sure you set the default to zero and don't reset it to be uh, null at any given time. Uh, TBL assembly, the value for the ship date must not precede the value of the assembly date. So we got a comparison between two fields here that we want to do in that table. Sounds like a table validation rule to me. All right. We have also in assembly, we have the, uh, the foreign key for the reference relationship, and you're going to use that single pick reference, as I mentioned already. And, and then in the uh, um, uh, supplemental table, uh, assembly start parts, you'll have a part number in there. That will be the alternate key field for that, one of the alternate key fields for that one. And it will take any form up to 15 characters, meaning that it could be less than 15 characters. It, does, it, it doesn't have to be alphanumeric. It could be dashes or whatever else. Uh, it doesn't have to be uppercase even, OK? Uh, so it's just a 15 character field, right? On the forms. On the subject form uh, contact, use, use this time contact table. Again, that's in there for you already in the, uh, in the uh, um, work file. Uh, you have the start of a subject form for machine. And what I mean by that is all the fields from the machine are in there, but what we don't have in there is the subform for the junction relationship that's between machine and assembly. Okay, uh, the lookup forms uh, for all uh, lookup forms for all the included lookup tables are there, but then you have to make the the one lookup table and the one lookup form yourself, and then build all the other forms and tables shown in the relationship diagram. In a, in form assembly, the total cost control is derived control, and it's again the shipping costs and production costs and the other costs added to get some together. Uh, it, do not put a tab stop on a derived control, lock it, but keep it enabled, all right? So remember those properties that you have to set on the control itself in order to make that happen. Uh, on the parts page, you have to put a subform in for that supplemental relationship. On the machines page, a subform for uh, that junction relationship. And on the machine, uh, on the assemblies page for machine, you want to put a subform for that junction relationship. So I told you exactly the things you have to do in order to create the tables, establish the relationships, create the forms that you have to do. All right. Now the reports, again, you're going to build that, you're going to build a report called, and that's the first one that I had up at the top, RPT shipped assemblies dash cost delays from a query that is QRP with the same name. Only records for assemblies they actually ship should be shown. They are grouped on the assembly type. Only assembly types that have been used to categorize an assembly record need to be shown. In other words, do not show assembly uh, sh the assembly type values that do not have a record, uh, an assembly record associated with them. Um, the display order for the groups specified in uh, the lookup table assembly start type is used to define the order in which the groups should appear in the report. The total cost control is a derived control that sums up the ship costs, production costs, and other costs, just like the other place. The ship delay co control is a derived control that subtracts the assembly date from the ship date. Any assembly that took more than three days has a shipping delay highlighted. And I, again, you saw that when, when I pointed it out. Important fields should have their subtotals and the grand totals. And you can see which ones I'm talking about, again, when you look at what I gave you up above. Then the other report is about cost by contact. And again, reads pretty much a similar way, but we're going to do it for all the assemblies. It's not an inner join on this one, okay? So what does that mean? If I'm bringing back all assemblies, even if they don't have an assembly, uh, I'm sorry, even if they don't have uh, related information, okay? You use a left outer join, okay? You have a left outer join where the sending relationship, which is the contact, 
is uh, is the left side of it, okay? And and then the right side of it is your assemblies, okay? So again, we're uh, if you look up there, in fact, if I go back up to the to where I had that example, and you look in there, you should see. Oh, did I not update this? No, I, but I do have it in, in the uh, compiled version, okay? In the compiled version, you'll see that I actually have some of these where there is no assembly in here, okay? It says zero assemblies, and that's okay. Now, it may show you a blank record. That's okay, all right? That's a that's a little flub in access that you can't get around. Don't worry about that, okay? I'll show you mine in a second where I actually did all this, okay? Now, after all that, Okay, and by the way, again, you, there is an extra credit associated with that second report. If you can make that little uh, message come up that says that that the you have excessive shipping costs, you'll get five extra points. All right. Now, if you do all that, you still don't get the full credit. You still got to do one thing on your own. Okay, uh, something of your design. And there's two options on this, and you can do one or the other or both. All right. The first option is you build another supplemental relationship. It's of your design, but don't just build the table and build the relationship. You also have to build the subform and put it into the proper uh, subject. And you could put use any one of those subject tables that exist, assembly, machine, or contact. The second option is you build a junction relationship. Now they don't hit. Again, I want you to build at least one new subject on this, and that's yours to decide what subject you want to build, and then have it linked to one of those three existing ones that you have. All right, so it's a many to many between whatever you come, whatever subject you put in assembly, or whatever subject you have in a machine, or whatever subject you have in contact. All right. Now I know building this, building junctions is a lot harder than building, and and by the way, on that one. Both, you'll, you'll have to also create on the subject a uh, subject form. And then in the form for both of the subjects, you'll have to put a subform that allows you to manage the junction records from either one. Now, I know junctions are a lot harder than, than supplementals. That's why if you opt to do one, you'll get the regular points that go with it. If you opt to do Number two, you'll get the regular points for that, but I'll also give you five more extra credit points if you do it right. And then if you do them both, you can earn 10 extra credit points if you do, if they come out correct, okay? So what's the great basis? Everything working correctly, everything properly set up and working properly. A functionally error-free subject table, form, query, report, including smart tab orders. Watch your tab orders. I could not believe how many of you ignored the tab orders on the last project. Tab orders are meaningful, guys. Make sure you check them all, always, all right? You have to use the naming conventions, bottom line. If you're not using them by this time, boy, you've got real problems. And we'll take off a lot of points this time if you if you ignore them. Uh, table field definitions, uh, proper use of keys, field types, the field formats, required fields. Field captions and descriptions must be included. Be, be very descriptive on the descriptions, OK? Um, uh, as appropriate, validation rules. And you guys know the rules about when you ought to have a validation rule, OK? Uh, numbers, currency, states, almost. That will all, I can't think of many situations where you wouldn't at least uh, anchor the range at some point on those, okay? And then, of course, on your required fields, you have to say is not null. Uh, foreign key looking fields for all the relationships, logically non-redundant fields. And again, I'm giving you all the fields I want you to build, okay? So there shouldn't be any logically non-redundant uh, non, uh, uh, fields among those, okay? But again, I am also welcoming that if you want to add some fields to this, feel free. You might notice that I didn't put anything in there about pricing the thing. If you wanted to do that, go ahead. And you may want to create a little pricing report. And if you did that and I was impressed, you may get extra credit for it. Um, uh, the form design, tab orders, on-screen cues, help messages and visualizations, like you know that it's a required uh, 
control uh, general format stuff. Just make it user friendly. Right? That's what it comes down to. Um, the combo boxes and list boxes have to be working appropriately. When I click that little ghost bu button, I better see the right lookup uh, table come up, you know, and keep in mind that is only going to open on lookup fields, okay, not on, on, on the uh, reference um, foreign key field, okay, it won't have one like that, all right, so just the, the category relationships, you will always have a lookup form that should open on them, uh, the accuracy of the reports, you know, making sure that all the math is worked out right, and the uh, conditional formats work correctly, uh, the, the overall design of the report and the forms, everything needs to be aesthetically pleasing. You may see, you see I already picked a, a look for the forms uh, that I put in here. Please change those. Make them look the way you want them to look. Um, there, you know, I know a lot of you have, have done that and, and go ahead and do that. Okay. If you leave it the way it is, I mean, they will look good. Okay. Um, we're not going to give you a whole lot of points for aesthetics. though on forms, anyway. uh, we're more mainly on the forms, the aesthetics I look for are the, the help messages and things like that, that, that you make required fields stand out that you make, uh, um, rich text fields stand out, okay? I'm not gonna worry about the colors of the form that much, okay? Um, the uh, You need to add data into your system, guys. Okay, a lot of data. Put a lot, I, I, I think in mine, I've got 10 assemblies, assembly records in there, and that's nowhere near enough, truthfully. I mean, I should probably go, go to 20 to really get some very robust reports, okay? You know, add a lot of data to your system. Make sure you're really testing everything out. You have to use the ball objects, okay? I am saying this in capital red letters because some of you are still building things from scratch. And you know what? You're losing tons of points because you're missing things, doing things wrong. They're not cr connecting correctly. You know, it. sometimes you are spending hours and hours doing things that I have already done for you. All you had to do was use those ball objects and change the things as I show you in the tutorials, as it's spelled out step by step in the workbook, and yet you don't, okay? Well, from now on, when you do that, you get a zero on those things, okay? We're not even going to even, we're not even going to, if we open it up and we realize you didn't use the ball objects, you get a zero on that object. Do not make a switchboard. Do not attempt to compile it. When you do that, I get very suspicious that you might actually be getting something from another semester and copying it in, you know? Don't do that, okay? If you do, you get caught. You're not just gonna fail this class, I'm gonna report you. That's all there's to it, okay? Some of you have already gotten emails from me, okay? And the university should be getting with you any day by now, by the way, all right? Okay, point distribution. In fact, I would drop the class you know, if you know you've done something wrong and and they're going to get you, okay. At least they'll they'll know that you realized your 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 fault, and you'll they may take mercy on you. Point distribution, tables and re I'm sorry to, to those of you who are doing the work. I those things are not directed to you, okay. And I'm sorry that a few bad apples are spoiling it for the rest of us. Point distribution, object packages, okay. The tables and relationships. If you do the minimum amount that I asked you to do up there, you'll get you could get up to 20 points. Okay. On forms and controls, you get 30 points. And then there'll be another 10 points for making them aesthetically pleasing. And then on reports, and and they have to be based on a query that's correct and all their controls. 30 points. And again, aesthetics will count for 10 points on this. Okay. How we're going to grade this, you get up to 100 points for doing the required stuff, obviously, okay? You must use that P02, your name, that ACCDB from this semester, and I've given you that out there. The student design extra credit, again, you can make, you can earn up to 10 points if you do both the junction, uh, another junction and a supplemental relationship. If you just do the junction, you could get up to five more points. If you just do the supplemental, you don't get any extra credit points. That's part of the regular points. Okay. If you put that excessive ship cost on there, I'll give you another five points. If you can make that work. Okay. I don't just mean throwing a label out there 
and making it show up on all the records, okay? It has to come up selectively. It's got to come up for the ones that actually violated that rule about exceeding 50%, the shipping cost uh, exceeding 50% of the total cost. And then the other extra credit I'm going to give you is if you make a, uh, there is a, a multi item report that you can make for assembly machines for the junction table assembly machines it's actually very simple to do and i could give you i'll give you five points for that i'm going to show you that right now in um the work file itself okay let me bring it back here if you go to the work file wrong one Go to the work file, you'll see that there's a report here that says REX assembly machine. That means this is a report example. It's not really the report. It's a snapshot of what the report would look like if you built it right. And by the way, I, I say report. It's a snapshot of the form. I want you to build a form for this, okay? This is just a multi-item form that was built on TJN, which you don't have here, you got to build it yourself first. TJN assembly carrot machine. Okay. This is what it looks like. All right. I've I've built one already. Okay. And and I want you to basically replicate this. If you could replicate this and make it look really nice, like I tried to do here, then that's that's all I'm asking you to do. All right. And you get five points just to do that. In fact, since I wrote the instructions, I decided that I'm going to give you a, uh, another option, a couple options that are along the same line. Um, I am going to open up the, solu the uh, solution to this in uh, compiled mode. And by the way, I put this compiled 32 file out there. I am working on the compiled 64. I should have it done in another hour or so. And when it's out there, those of you who have a 64-bit machine will be able to download it and open it up. And why didn't that open up? Hello? OK. All right, so, and again, I do not want you to build this, do not build the switchboard, all right? But what you could do is use this one then to see what the what my assembly form looked like when I got done with it and how I have the uh, supplemental and I've got the junction and here's my inspectors and blah, 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 the stuff we're used to doing and that all this stuff works really nice. And then you've got the ones I've built for you. You'll actually, you've got this form and it opens up and you see that this is what I want you to add in the machines as a subform to do the assemblies, uh, the related assemblies. And then contacts, and there was nothing that you had to do on this. This is done, all right? But you can use it for inspiration to look up things. Um, this is the assemblies machine that I built, okay? and. The thing that you'll notice here is when you'll notice that when you if you go out there and you generate this using the multi item, you get a uh, control for the um, uh, for the primary key field, the auto number field, you don't need it. So you could just delete that column, basically, uh, it won't hurt anything deleting it because it's still there on the source of this, it's just not being shown because it's not needed. Right. And then there's another one. If you want to build this one instead, feel free. It's going to take just as much work, but you could do one for the supplemental, where now I'm just showing the uh, assemblies for, and parts together. So the, the parts for each assembly. So you see the assembly being repeated and then each of its parts, basically. This is basically just managing directly the records that are in the junction table. Okay, so you could build either one of those and you would get five points. The other thing I'm going to offer up is that if you want to, you could try to use the auxiliary, build an auxiliary relationship on one of those subjects. And, I'll, and if you do that and you, and you build the, uh, the mechanism into the, whatever the subject is for that auxiliary, if you build the subform into that to manage the auxiliary fields, I'll give you five points for that too, okay? 
well, I should say two. You can do one of those three things. You can either do this, this form, this form, or the auxiliary relationship, and I will give you five points, okay? So what does that tell you? You can earn up to 20 extra credit points on this assignment. Pretty good, huh? So let me get back to Zoom, if it lets me. Aziz, are you there yet? Yes, I am here. I'm having trouble getting back. Oh, let me do this. There we go. Sorry, got it. All right. I think that's it. All right. Now, the other thing I want to point out to you, I, I sent you a thing about the uh, 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 reference RD. It has a lot of information about the different characteristics of the different relationships. That is an incredibly handy thing, okay? There are several others in there that help you, that I think we're at a point now in the class where they could give you some real insight about relationships. And if you get stuck, they could help you out a little bit, okay? Um, the one is, and I have to bring it up here so I could see it. Uh, the one is um, RE, where I have a summary of the different kinds of referential integrity settings. So in other words, the cascade update, and cascade delete, when what you what the setting ought to be for certain different uh, situations. You might want to look at those, okay? I've given you that on this, so you don't really need it for this, this one. But it, when you do your own, when you do your final project, you'll probably need some guidance on that, and that could help you out a little bit. There is both a document and a database in, in the references for the self-relationships. It's labeled RH. RH is the document for it. And then there's an RH ACCDB file that is a database that shows you how the two different self-relationships work. Remember, we have the recursive relationship and the couplet relationship. You're not needing to use those on this on project two, but you may need to want to use them on project three. Um, RK uh, is a general method uh, for, for managing relational data in a data sheet. Okay, remember, uh, in one of the uh, one of them I showed you that you could from the data sheet not only show the master record, but then child records that would come out of a relationship. Okay, there's actually a, a reference in there that explains a lot more detail on that. Then RL is about the different kinds of alternate keys per the relationship. In other words, you look at the, the different type of table types that are used in the relationship, and it'll tell you about the alternate key in each one of those. So if, and again, some of you are still struggling on the alternate key. I don't know why, because I've actually given you templates to do almost all of them. But if you are, are having trouble sending the alternate key and you need more information, look at RL. And then the one I really want to point you to for this and for anything else we do uh, from here on out is the one that's RJ, which is form aesthetics, okay? Which, by the way, could also be used for report aesthetics. It's really the same kind of thing. So, you know, I know on this one, I've used just one theme, really, that I developed, okay? But there are a lot of different themes out there. And I, I've given you some that uh, I've used in the past. When we get to lesson seven, I will actually have an application where every form will have a different theme on it, just to show you all the differences that you could have. And that's reflected in that reference RJ. So that should help you out a bit too. Okay. With that,